We're going to look at setting up the Pentair PRF RO reverse osmosis unit. We're going to show opening the box and exactly how it all goes together. In the manual it recommends wearing disposable gloves whilst doing so because the membranes are treated with preservative and also there's silicon grease inside little sachets which will need to be applied to O-rings. So let's have a look at what's in the box. So opening up the box, we have the first layer which contains the manifold housing. Uh, you notice there are two the same, those are for the reverse osmosis membranes. The one that's different is for the pre-filter. We also have the support leg which doubles up as a wrench to tighten the sumps up. Put those to one side. And down to the second layer. Inside here we have two reverse osmosis membranes. We have a Fibridin technology pre-filter. Uh, they also include a, a post filter uh, that's for taste purposes and, and is not needed uh, for general purification, so that can be discarded. Uh, there's an instruction manual if you choose to read it. There is the various connections and locking bar. There's the O-rings for the sump. And also with each one comes a pressure gauge, um, which can be fitted in line. A uh, good indicator of your water pressure and when the pre-filter needs changing. Then at the bottom of the box are the three white sumps or filter membrane housings. So take those out and put the box to one side. Inside the bag with all the fittings are silicon lubricant pouches. There's usually six of them. And the first thing to do is to apply silicon lubricant to any areas where there's going to be an O-ring that has uh, to be assembled. So the O-rings would be pushed into these various parts which would need greasing. And also on the end of each membrane here. So let's start assembling these. I'm going to cut open or rip open the top of a silicon pouch and first of all open up one of the membranes there we are so the first thing to do on this is to apply lubricant to both of the o-rings. It's important to do this as it makes assembly much easier and it also improves the water tightness of the unit when assembled. So that's one of them lubricated. And then it simply slides into the sump housing and also just lubricate the little seal around the top edge here. Right, we've now lubricated that up and we need to fit an O-ring to the sump itself. That fits into that top groove and then once again as with all the O-rings we need to lubricate it.
Right, well, we've lubricated all of the various rings. Now, some find it easier to take the RO membrane and insert it into the sump housing first, and then put the housing on. To tighten it up fully, use the multi-purpose bracket to tighten that up. It will stop when it's tight. We're going to do exactly the same now with the second membrane housing. Right, now we're going to do the pre-filter. Works very much the same way. Take the wrapping off. Discard. Now the end rings don't need as much lubrication, but a little isn't a bad idea. sits on that, ready for the housing. And you need another tube of lubricant. Right, let's now assemble the pre-filter. Place the pre-filter into place. Slide the housing down on top. And then tighten up as per the other two sump housings. There we are. There are the three housings fitted. And for stabilization, you can then fit this as a bracket to the unit. And there we have the housings assembled. Now we need to sort out the water connections. Now with this unit, it comes with no connecting pipes. It has all the connectors. So I've selected two lengths of 3 8 John Guess tubing and a half inch John Guess fitting for the inlet so that we can actually use it. So let's take a look at what we're going to do now. Inside, are three elbows. Now we have the white half inch elbow which fits there. Now we then have a black elbow which is the waist elbow. It has a little notch on the back, a thin one, which will only allow it to fit in the correct position there. And then we have the product elbow with a, a larger lug there so it will only fit into that position. Also in the pack we have locking clips for when the tubing is attached to them and we have an adapter here which you don't need so that can be discarded and we have the locking bar which locks all of these parts in position when fitted. So before assembling these once again we need to lubricate the fittings. A little bit of lubrication around the O-ring. I haven't pushed it in fully yet. And there. So we'll 
push that one in, that one in, that one in. They're clicking. You notice on the back they're coded as well. We have a, an arrow on the input, a triangle on the waste, and a square on the product. And that matches the coding on this locking bar. There's a square and an arrow. Make sure that this bar is put in in the right place. And then put that in place and give it a click. This means that these elbows cannot be removed. They're permanently fitted now. That is the unit assembled. Now we're ready to use it. So let's go over and plug this into a water supply and see how it works. Right, let's look at connecting it up. First of all, we have our inlet, which pushes in to the white connection. And I've put a hose connector on the end. We then have our waste, 3 8 which pushes in. And then this needs to go down a suitable drain, such as this. And then we have our blue for our product. Push fits in and then this would go into your filling tank. At the moment, so I don't get water everywhere, I'm going to pop that down the drain as well. Right, let's turn the water on and start producing. The water gradually works its way through. And you can see that waste is now coming out of the black tube. Nothing is yet coming out of the product tube as it has to work its way through the membrane. Here it goes. We would recommend running the unit for at least an hour to flush through all of the preservatives from the RO membrane and also to allow the membrane to bed in. Sometimes it can take up to 24 hours of running for the membrane to reach optimum performance. But the water coming out of this, once the preservative is gone, uh, will be pure water, needing only a, perhaps a very little polishing from DI resin. Depending on the water input pressure uh, of where you are or whether you use a booster pump, some people are actually able to work directly from this unit, plugging a pole into this. But the majority of users will want to feed this into a storage tank, um, either in their vehicle or outside. That's how simple it is. There's no flush valves, there's nothing to flush, and uh, there's no other tubing needed. This reverse osmosis unit also has a very clever feature that inbuilt into the manifold head is an auto shut-off valve. So if your product is feeding into a tank, say on a, a float valve, when the float valve switches off, the unit will shut down. To demonstrate that, I've got a valve here, which I put onto the product. If I turn the product off, i.e. the tank is filled, you can then look at the waste, and after a few seconds it shuts the unit off. Uh, no solenoid valves needed, just a float valve. If you then empty your tank, use some of your tank and everything's plugged in still, you can replicate that by opening it back up, the unit switches back on again.